right, this is John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you and where I am in the world today is Miami, Florida area and we're here at the Fairchild Tropical Botanical Gardens. And the reason why I'm here today is for the 24th International Mango Festival. I love mangoes, one of my favorite fruits and I'm here for the festival. Hopefully it's gonna be every dream I wish for. Maybe every wet mango dream I've wished for. So anyways, let's go ahead and head into the Fairchild Tropical Botanical Garden. I think I want to show you guys like the edible fruit trees, their edible gardening area, and then I'll hit the mango festival. So now I'm in the Fairchild Botanical Garden and we're here at the William F. Whitman Tropical Fruit Pavilion. They have a big glass house here to, prevent, to protect some of the more tropical fruits that they're growing inside there. I'm not going to go ahead and take you on a tour in there before. I've been here before. So if I remember, I'll post a link down below to the video so you guys can see what's growing inside there. I, I kind of walked around inside there, nothing really like was like that amazing. So I'm not going to waste your guys' time. Let's go ahead and uh, tour the outside actually around the building where they actually have other fruits. These are some of my favorite fruits. They get huge. Check out this guy. This guy is gigantic. These are known as jackfruits. And uh, these could be and are the largest fruit in the world. They could be up to like uh, 100 pounds and they taste like juicy fruit bubble gum. So if you guys live here in South Florida, definitely want to grow jackfruit. I mean, look at this. There's like so many on this tree. They're all over there, even on the ground. They're coming, they come out of the uh, trunk of the tree, just sitting all down here. They have all kinds of other uh, fruit trees like in their decoration uh, around this area, lots of different kinds. You know, I'm not super impressed with the collection. There's a lot of common ones. There's a few uncommon ones. But actually, I would much rather visit a local farm that has a, grows a genetic diversity to see, you know, how they're doing. Other things I want to show you guys real quick are their little vegetable garden that they have here. Um, looks kind of pitiful here in the summertime. They say you can't grow in the summer in uh, South Florida, which is not accurate. You just got to grow the right kind of crops. And they're growing some of them, but not all of them. They got some basil. They got some rosemary, some chives, sweet potato. That's an excellent one to grow. Um, tomatoes aren't doing so well. They got some pineapple in there. They got some mint and some strawberries. Oh, but here's a really good one. I'm glad they got this one planted over here. Oh, here's two actually. So this is a good leafy green you guys should grow in the summertime. This is hibiscus, cranberry hibiscus. And so there's one known as roselle and false roselle. So those are really uh, good ones to grow. They kind of taste uh, a little bit sorely. And then my favorite one is actually right here. I don't even know if it's marked. But this thing, look how massive this thing is. This thing is huge. Most people, unfortunately, walking by have no clue what this is. And actually, you're not supposed to pick stuff at the botanical gardens. But this is actually uh, the katuk. So you guys can see this thing is like just grown gigantic. It's super large. All these leaves are edible. Uh, my friend says they taste like peanut butter. I just like to say that they taste kind of nutty. But that's perfect for this kind of weather in the summertime. Other summer vegetables that will grow well here that also grow well in the desert heat in excess of 100 degrees for me are Malbar spinach. It does amazing. Also the uh, Egyptian spinach that does really good too. The Okinawan spinach and the longevity spinach or Gynera procumbens. All those guys will thrive in the heat of the summer. So don't just take the summers off in South Florida like most people do. Also eggplants and okra two other good crops to grow in the summertime. You guys will be ultra successful. All right, I think I'm bored of this area here. Let's go ahead and head over to the real reason why I'm here at the Mango Festival. So now we're in the area of Fairchild Botanical Garden where the Mango Festival takes place. And this is basically what it is. Uh, there's several different areas. There's uh, an area with like uh, booths and exhibitors that serve food. There's uh, other exhibitors that have like garden products and there's other exhibitors selling fruit. And then there's uh, a band, of course. <laughs> there's also a classroom area where they actually give classes during the day. There's a food demo area where they're giving classes on like how to prepare mangoes. And then also there's a mango tasting area. So what I think I'm gonna do next, actually maybe head over to the mango tasting area for you guys. So now we're in the area of the Mango Festival that has the Mango Tasting Room. And so I've been waiting for this. This is probably one of the reasons why I came. And uh, so it's $2 per person. I was here early in the day. The line was actually super long. It's later now and it's much quieter. I don't think they really ran out of mangoes. They can't do that here. So uh, 
We're gonna go ahead and uh, head inside and show you guys how the mangoes taste and what they're tasting out today. So now I'm inside the mango tasting area. It's two bucks to get in. As you guys can see, there's all different varieties of mangoes I get to taste. I think varieties that I've never tasted before, like 10 different kinds, and they give you a little uh, form to fill out so you can pick out your favorites to see what the uh, winner this year is. So we're gonna go over one of them at a time. This one's called the Angie Angie. We're gonna go ahead and get a sample of this. Mm. I don't like that so much. Don't forget, use two picks. Go in the container. It, it's good, but I think the last one is better. I don't think so. This is a uh, Malika. That's kind of like an Adolfo or champagne mango. This is a Nam Doc Mai. And this is one of my favorite mangoes. Mm. I know I've had more flavorful ones. I mean, it's what you like, you know, but. It's a Fairchild mango. Actually, I like that one. They're hard to describe the flavor, they're so like complex. It's not just like the ones you buy at the store. Okay, here's a rosy gold mango. <laughs> yeah, kind of pineapple-y or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, different. I think that might be my number three. <laughs> but not number one, huh? You tried Angie, right? You tasted one mango, you tasted them all. All right. This one's called the Fair Ruby. This one is good, too. I like this one. It's a beautiful color. On my list, too. That's good. I like that one. Raham Kai Mew. I don't know if this is right. This is like a lot of more green still. Okay, next up we got the Cogs Hall. I mean, it's all right. Second last one is a Prieto. I don't know. I didn't like that one. It's not so good. So the last one's a Manolita. Mm. I mean, that was all right. Like, I don't know which one I like the best, but these are all really small samples. I think I just, I gotta like, this is like too much of a tease for me. I gotta go out and buy some like big ones and sample like a lot more. So now I wanna share with you guys just maybe a couple booths here at this event that I like a lot. Like a lot of the booths are like food booths and other booths. And there's not a whole lot of good stuff here. I mean, maybe like the plant sales that we'll show you in a little bit. But uh, one of the booths is uh, Eco Ripe Tropicals. Behind me, they have a huge tent, and they're selling all kinds of tropical fruits: uh, lychee, um, rambutan, mame, uh, dragon fruit. Yeah, some of it's uh, local, but a lot of it is also imported. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and uh, see if I can find any cool booths to share with you guys this year. So now I'm standing next to the uh, Mango Medics. Uh, area and this is the area that you could go if you have a mango tree and you got situations or diseases or bugs or problems with it and they got samples of different leaves over there what they look like and then they'll say hey I got this problem what do I do and then they'll tell you you know what you guys should do and I'm no expert in mango trees or growing them at all but what I will tell you is this and this is one of my solid beliefs that does hold true if you have a healthy tree it's me more resilient against diseases pests and bugs much like us, right? If you have a diseased, sick person that's not eating healthy, they're more likely you know, to get sick, lose their life, just like your tree is, right? So we wanna be able to feed our tree and make it as healthy as possible. And in my opinion, this is not done with conventional fertilizers because you're giving the tree a really limited scope of nutrients to work with. Think about it, out in nature, out in the forest, you know, mango trees have lived for hundreds of years. Without any, without any kind of pesticides, herbicides, and all this kind of stuff. And they've done, survived fine, and they've reproduced, made fruit. And we want to get back to more of this natural way about things. And that's why I believe so much 
in you know growing healthy trees. Now, for those of you guys that aren't here to get your um, you know uh, plants or mangoes diagnosed, I, I do always recommend you guys call your local university extension office. Uh, you know, with, with your gardening questions, fruit tree, vegetables, they're gonna you know be able to help you out at least diagnose your problem, and then you can look for organic uh, alternatives. Of course, they may offer. Uh, chemical and or organic alternatives so specify which ones you want but here in florida south florida you want to call the master gardeners at 305-248-3311 they'll answer all your questions for you and at least uh, help you out, get you in the right direction so now we're in the area of the mango festival where actually you could buy your own mango trees this to me is probably the most valuable part because yeah it's great to be a consumer and buy fruit or sample fruit like we just did but it's even better to grow your own and grow higher quality mangoes than you know what's available like for sale at the store or in the tasting like in the tasting as much as some of those mangoes tasted good i've had like way better mangoes off my friends trees that have like much more flavor when they're picked at peak ripeness and grown under ideal optimal soil conditions you know feeding your plants everything they need including the trace minerals which many growers unfortunately leave out and more importantly including and getting the micro uh, diversity of the beneficial organisms in the soil, the whole food soil web. And so that'll really develop a complex flavor in the mangoes that are just not gonna happen through conventionally grown or you know big commercial mangoes, unfortunately. So yeah, here's the fruit trees here. These are all grafted, they're about two years old and they're selling today for 35 bucks, which I mean, I think I've seen better deals at nurseries. So just find the variety you want here and might like try to find a local place selling the mango trees. But I want to go ahead and share with you guys, they have like over a dozen varieties right now. I want to share with you guys my two favorite ones. So I'll be your bestest friend uh, if you grow these and I'll come over in peak mango season and eat your mangoes. And I know you're gonna be growing them well and they'll be tasting good. So the two mangoes I want to share with you guys, since there's a whole bunch of different varieties and uh, there's mangoes from Panama, from Cuba, from Florida. But the ones actually I like the most are actually from India. India's got some really unique varieties of mangoes and they're known as the dessert mangoes and they have a, a floral flavor like no other. It's not just like a sweet mango that you're used to when you go to the store and you get like some Hayden's or whatever you get at the store. Like they always kind of taste like a mango, but these taste like florally and like way better. So this one's actually the uh, Malika and it's a hybrid between the Nulum and the Dusher and is considered among the best of the new generation of Indian dessert mangoes. And this is a semi-dwarf. So if uh, you know you guys have a small place, you don't have a big orchard, hey, get one of these guys. They're smaller trees, delicious fruit. Next door, I want to share with you guys this one. This is one of my favorite all-time mangoes. This is known as the uh, Nam Dok Mai. And this is from Thailand. This is another dessert mango. And I really like the dessert mangoes. They have a much better flavor to me than just the standard mangoes. So yeah, this is the one that I would get if I was a uh, growing one. All right, so I always run into all kinds of people when I come to these events, like I ran into a lot of viewers actually today. Okay. So if you guys are watching like, hey, hey, what's up? <laughs> but also ran into a, a friend, Steve Spangler, who runs uh, Exotica uh, Fruit Nursery in uh, Vista, California. And he's here, you know, uh, getting a lot of cool mangoes. He's been collecting stuff for the last three weeks. So if you guys are out in California, this is your hookup, this is your source where you want to get your uh, mango and other tropical fruit trees in California. And uh, what's the website, Steve, once again? ExoticaRareFruitNursery.com ExoticaRareFruitNursery.com We're in Vis Vista, California. Well, anyway. Yeah, Vista, California. Yeah. Anyway, I'll put a link down below to the video I made at Steve's place, and I hope to get out there again real soon, make another update. Here's some of the fruits. Give me an example of what I've collected from Trek Station and USDA. These are fruits from the ground. It's been one in many varieties. We have over 140 so far wow. in the last three years of collecting all different sizes. Some of these haven't even been named yet. Exquisite Ono, that's one from Hawaii. Golek is Indonesia. That's, I think, uh, Panama or Uruguay. Saigon, of course, is Vietnam. Chokinon is a Thailand variety. Oh, I like that one. I've had that before. Really amazing fruit. Anyway, Tongdong, and there's just so many mangoes out there. And we're growing in California. Mangoes everywhere. Yeah. All right. So now we're at the booth of uh, Mangoes with a ZZ. So MangoZZ.com. And they have a whole selection of different mangoes that are imported. So these mangoes are imported from like uh, Pakistan and India. Uh, some they have that are local grown. 
but they come uh, wrapped here, like in this uh, plastic stuff. And uh, you guys could order these, like most times of the year. So like anywhere from April to October, you guys could order fresh mangoes direct to you and get varieties that you haven't been able to taste before. Now the only downside to this is that uh, some of these imported mangoes, depending on where in the world they're imported from into the United States, they must be treated by irradiation so that they can actually import them. So these ones have been treated by irradiation. So I hope they clearly mark that on their website since you know some people don't want to eat irradiated food you know, such as myself. So I'm gonna much rather stick to local mangoes and ones that are treated with hot water uh, treatment uh, before Im importation. Of course, here at the uh, Mango Festival, I'm gonna be enjoying a lot of local grown mangoes and that's what I encourage you guys to do, grow your own. So now I wanna share with you guys another booth here at the Mango Festival and it's just this booth, it's uh, PLP Natural Products. And I love when I get to travel and I get to find new products that can help you guys and me out, uh, especially when growing natural wheat. And this is called the uh, PLP Natural Products. And this is their liquid. And this is uh, repels mosquitoes, no seams, fleas, ticks, and other pests. Now besides just repelling them, it also kills some of them. And they have a flip chart here with like before and after pictures when they treated different things such as like spider mites before and after, fire ants, and they got ones with uh, weevils and aphids and white flies and all kinds of stuff. So I mean the pictures are looking look, look pretty impressive but I don't know really how this stuff works. But the thing for me is you know checking out the ingredients. You know this is not organic approved but I would put this on my stuff. You know some, place, some companies just don't pay for the organic certification. But what they do here is they list everything that's in this product. So they have citronella oil, lemongrass, peppermint, cinnamon, garlic, and other ingredients which are listed here. Soybean oil, apple cider vinegar, and lecithin. And they use food grade ingredients for these guys, so that's really cool. And then the other thing is that, uh, you know, the reason why they came up with this product is because they own a uh, pesticide company and, uh, you know, a pest control company that was, they wanted, they had customers that wanted uh, natural alternatives and they tried some of the natural alternatives on the market and they didn't get results. So then they created their own. This has been tested at the University of Florida and on their website. They have the testing data on there, so it shows that it's good against like, uh, they have a test on spider mites and one's coming out on mosquitoes here pretty soon. But yeah, this stuff smells, I mean it smells like hell. I mean it smells like garlic and some other essential oils and stuff, but if it works, and especially like a one-time application, that's gonna be great. So I'm excited to try this myself. And yeah, it's uh, EPA registered. And yeah, oh, the other cool thing is you could spray this in the heat. Not that I recommend spraying your plants in the heat. I always recommend, you know, spraying in the early morning or late evening. But if you need to, you guys can spray this in the heat. Unlike other alternative, you know, organic controls, sometimes if you spray those in the heat, it'll burn your plants, especially things with the, uh, what is it, the cedar oils that'll like burn your plants. This, they've done testing in the heat, won't burn your plants, so that's really cool. Not that I recommend that, but you can. If you guys want to learn more about this stuff, you can visit their website at plpnaturalproducts.com. All right, so now it's lunchtime, and you might be wondering, what does John Kohler eat at the Mango Festival? <laughs> Guess what? It ain't mangoes, because there's not like a whole lot of mangoes there to eat or buy. I mean, there's a few samples, uh, you know, smooth, a few small toothpick-sized samples to eat, but there's not a lot of food. There's a lot of like processed junk foods and all kinds of stuff they're selling. But I encourage you guys to bring your own food, and that's what actually I've done today. So I brought a whole box here. <laughs> Unity Groves, local grown, Pride of the Redlands. And uh, this is what's left. This, just a couple days ago, this was a 20 pound box of the dragon fruit. And this is just not just any dragon fruit. I encourage you guys to get the deepest colored dragon fruits if you're gonna be buying dragon fruit. So instead of the white, which kind of tastes more blase, plain, these are the red ones. So let me go ahead and as you guys can see, it's like all over my face. We're gonna cut this open. And this is what the dragon flu looks like on the inside. Look at that. Wouldn't you rather eat this instead of a mango? <laughs> I don't know, mangoes are one of the popular fruits in the world, but some of the ways they're serving mangoes here, like I'd actually rather eat plain dragon fruit. Of course, I'm a mango fanatic, and if they had good, decent mangoes, I'd probably be eating those for lunch. Mmm. These dragon fruits, they're amazing. Only problem is they're gonna stain you. Anyways, I'm gonna get back to my lunch and we'll get back inside and uh, finish up for this video for you guys. 
All right, so now we're going to go into one of the areas where they actually gave classes today and giving classes. They gave a class on like uh, mangoes in Cuba and importing mangoes for commercial purposes into the U.S., getting Cuban varieties here to grow them. Then the speaker that's up right now, I listened a little bit earlier. He was talking about like pruning your mango tree for optimal production. And actually, you don't even want a mango tree. You want a mango uh, hedge. And it's gonna grow big. So he talked about like right when you plant it, you're gonna you're gonna prune it low, like you know maybe like only a couple feet high, like up to here. And then uh, and then it's gonna it's gonna branch out. And then you gotta judiciously prune it to keep it really small, because the mangoes grow at like the terminal buds at the ends. And so you're gonna prune them back a lot just to make a small little bush. And if you do it in this way, they're gonna uh, you're gonna be able to get mangoes in two years instead of like eight if you let it grow super tall so yeah if you guys have a mango tree like keep it pruned and look up how to prune a mango tree properly i learned it but i can't go over it all with you guys anyways also in this room besides where they give classes they actually have a big display of mangoes so let me see if i could uh, take you guys and uh, show you guys some of the mangoes in here while we play some uh delicious and beautiful music for you guys So here's a solution for you guys since I wasn't able to make it around to show you guys all the different mangoes. Uh, there's a local artist, his name is Mark Diamond, and he produced this poster here. Now this poster wasn't made this year, it wasn't made last year, it was made in 2011. And maybe one of these days he'll update it and make a newer version of the poster. But on this poster here, it has over 200 varieties, uh, you know, that were on display in 2011. And since then, you know, they have more varieties. But you can go, any one of you guys could go online, buy this poster at mangoposter.com. See just over 200 of the varieties on this poster, uh, you know, to be aware and to see what some of the genetic diversity of mangoes look like. And I truly wish you guys could taste them, as uh, I wish I could taste them too. So we come pretty much to the end of the day. We spent the whole day here, just about, at the Mango Festival. And what I'm gonna say is that I'm underwhelmed, kind of like the tasting, like, it's really cool on paper, and it, like, they make it, they hype it up a lot, and it's cool, for sure, like, it's all about mangoes, but I just wish there's like, more tastings and more local mangoes for sale. I mean, they had a great display of mangoes that were grown here, but like, I guess tomorrow on Sunday, you could get them for auction, but unfortunately, they didn't have as much tasting as I would like, and they're selling even imported mangoes. I mean, I guess this is an exclusive, like, local mango, event but yeah that's just my feelings also i thought that you know the booths lots of commercial booths which there was more booths that really had mangoes or maybe having to do with gardening and maybe other plants for sale i mean i know this is a mango celebration but there's just a limited amount of mango trees for sale that was uh you know available through fairchild but maybe like bringing in other people to have more mangoes and more varieties available and more samples and like more mango uh fruits for sale too there's a few booths that sold mangoes but not a lot. And this is just my honest opinions. Like if I had to do it again, like I probably wouldn't come to the mango festival. I'll probably never come to this mango festival again. I'd rather go to other festivals and check those guys out. For those, those of you guys out there, if you're really into mangoes and you live in the area, yeah, definitely come by. I do need to say that, you know, this uh, festival costs $25 to get into. If you're not a member of the botanical garden here, 
Luckily, I'm a member of a, uh, the American Horticultural Society, and they have a reciprocal agreement with the Fairchild Botanical Garden, so that's how I was able to get in today. And this also gives me access to other botanical gardens that I visit and share with you guys around the country. So I do encourage you guys actually to uh, become a member of your local botanical garden uh, so you guys could have access to these wonderful gifts. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much my opinions on this. I'm gonna save your money. Uh, I'd rather actually go to a local mango farm. So there's like a really cool mango farm I made a video about in Delray Beach. You know, they had more uh, mangoes that I got to sample and buy and take home and eat. And that was a much more fulfilling experience than the event here. Also visit your local uh, fruit council or rare fruit grower. So here in uh, South Florida, it's a rare fruit council. Visit with them. They're going to have talks and educational events similar to the ones here. And they're also probably going to have fruit tastings and save your 25 bucks. All right. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below to be notified new and upcoming episodes I have coming out about every three to four days. Also be sure to check my past episodes. I have over 1,100 episodes now. Teach you guys all aspects on how you guys could grow your own food at home. So uh, once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep on growing. All right, this is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com to do another exciting episode for you. And what we're going to do today for you guys is thanks to uh, somebody on Fiverr that wanted to do a coaching session with me. But instead of a coaching